Hi Scott, and welcome to Reason 2.5, the tutorial. Okay dude, first of all, you might want to change some of your original preferences for Reason so that you start up with a blank track. Go to Edit, Preferences, and on the general page, you see Default Song, Empty Rack, that's what I've got. Um, this should be on by default, but if it's not, put it on. Use high resolution samples because it sounds a lot better. And just double check your audio settings. Make sure it's on a DirectX or whatever works better for you. And also important to set up is the sound locations. Uh, the reason directory you've got should be there by default, but it's good to put any other sample directories that you know of into there, so for instance you just click on there and go to your computer wherever and put your samples on. The reason why that's important is that if you create a song which you've got samples loaded up from a different sound location that's not in one of these mentioned sound locations, it'll ask you where the files are every time you go to load that song, so if you've got it in one of these search paths it'll find it automatically. Okay, enough of that. Now, we've got a blank track, so first thing we want to do is add a mixer. So right click and click on the mixer 14.2. Okay, now we've got a mixer. Let's add some drums. It's good to start with some beats. So right click again and Add a re drum drum computer. Voila! This will load it up a blank one. Now you can either load up a kit here and search for one of the uh, reason reason drum kits. Or you could uh, start doing a custom one straight away, but for the time being we'll just load up a default one that's if I can find my reason sound bank the factory one so many other ones here I can't see it ah oh, there we are and up to redrum drum kits I like house so I'm going house uh, it's going to be fun what the hell Okay, now I've got the house kit in there. You're probably familiar with this interface, I don't know, but it's a typical layout of a uh, drum machine. And to select every sample, you just click on the select buttons there. And uh, usually this is default bass drum. But up here you can see your little windows there where you can open up an individual sample and load that up to replace the one you got if you don't want it. So it's a good idea to load up just a pretty standard kit and then just change the instruments as you feel you need to because to start off you just want to get some beats down for a timing reference so I'll just click in some beats here Okay, that should give us a standard uh, drum pattern Okay, so we've got a basic 4-4 pattern down. As you can see, you just basically left click to add in a note. If you left click again, it gets rid of the note. Now, you can also put in dynamics by editing the accent here and say flicking it to hard. If I drop a note down now, you'll see it's uh, a darker red colour. And that basically means it's louder. And the same goes for the soft one, you can see the different colours there. Okay, now the flam. The flam you can put on just by clicking the little red dots above the notes. And what that does is add a short sequence of like <coughs> which you can hear there. And you can uh, adjust this knob here to adjust the amount of flam. hear 
what that does. Okay, but we don't really want flame on there because I don't like it. <laughs> the other feature is it's got a shuffle. Adds a bit of a swing to it. You can adjust the shuffle amount down at the bottom here on your uh, play control pattern shuffle. Clinic subtle is usually pretty good. Now, the default pattern you start in is got 16 steps. Now you can change that here by going, say you want a 32 pattern, like so. But now you got this big gap afterwards, right? So how do you edit the other bits? You slide this up here to get to the next 16 steps. Now I can enter the drum ba beat in again, put that accent back to medium. Okay, we've got that all happening. Well, that's how you do more of those anyway. You can change the resolution so you can make even faster notes, but that actually increases the speed of the pattern as well. So I'll leave it back to 16 as default now. Okay, I'm going to change this back to 16 because I don't really feel that making it 32 step loop is going to help for this. We'll keep it simple. Now I can just add some uh, dodgy claps. Select the claps. You notice this is all blank down here now. Just add some in. Pretty cheesy, I know, but hey. some hi-hats. Bit of Congo. Alright. So, say so you come up with a fairly uh, basic pattern, and then you go, okay, but uh, I want something a bit more intense now, but I don't want to lose the original pattern. What you can do is you can uh, right click anywhere on the redrum machine pretty much. Click on copy pattern and go to your pattern grid up here, select the next one, number two, and go paste. Now you're free to make the alterations you want to with having kept the original loop that you made. So let that a bit more. You can also see this is preview button up here if you just want to check out what that sounds like and you can also mute tracks or solo them as well if you just want to hear that one individual sound. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so that's all good and fine. We've made that there, but how the hell do we put this into a track? Well, first of all, let's just do another few setup things. Put on high quality interpolation, that's good. And come down here to your track view. Now, 
we're in the default sequence of view so we want to go to the edit mode and in the edit mode pull this up a bit you can see all our instruments there okay and what you want though is down further still you can see here this is your pattern selection lane you go up and grab the pencil tool it's on A1 at the moment just draw it in you can see what's happening there A2 has appeared from nowhere that's because that's the pattern that's currently selected as default so as soon as you start drawing it'll start drawing whatever you've got up there uh, as the default one that's the first time you do it so what I've drawn in is pattern A1 and if I want to draw a bit more in say over here I just click again and voila if it was all A1 and I wanted to uh, put in the second pattern I just click on this pop up here and select A2 and voila and of course as you can see if we pull this down again you've got A, B, C, D so you've got quite a lot of room eight patterns you can store in each of those letters quite a lot of room for variation there okay so now if we pull up the sequence of view again and switch back to the arrange mode there with that button very important button we've, we've made it basically within the loop points there so let's hit play and have a listen switch it back to edit mode so we can see what's going on ok nothing's happening and you go why isn't the pattern changing well let's have a look down here so you can see the automation override and the light for punched in is lit up which means you've made a manual selection over the top of whatever automation is going in and to hear it again you just have to hit reset and that'll be fine let's have a listen you can hear it, it's very subtle, it's just the hi-hats but it is definitely there one thing you might want to do is just create a totally blank pattern for the moment of silence because uh, if you don't create a pattern of silence, you just can't delete a section of the pattern. It has to have a pattern there by default. Now, there is one other way to put down drum beats with redrum, uh, which is a completely different method. If you noticed all these up here, there is room where you can manually draw in the instruments. There and you can do this over the top of the patterns you've already programmed in or you can start that way um, let's just stop this for a sec and pull down this window you notice this green box around the pattern bar which means that that section is automated whenever you see a green box it means it's automated now if we want to do this with, without using pattern selection and we want to be able to individually edit every note for every pattern that's on there and say okay what we do is we take off enable pattern selection and um, pick the pattern you want right click on there and go copy pattern to track now, providing you are actually selected uh, on the redrum track down in the uh, range or edit mode, it will paste all the rhythms down, as you can see right there. And now, when we hit play, see it's playing that. So, if we say deleted a section of notes out here, take that loop back. You can see how you have a lot more 
power and your editing there and also your different uh, velocity ranges for the notes if I pull this up a bit more you can put in any value you want there instead of just soft, medium or hard so if I do this I have a much more subtle effect when it comes around you can use that to do fade ins and all that kind of stuff so it's pretty handy Okay, so going back to the arrange mode, you can see now that all of these things have been uh, grouped up and in different colors. That's what happens by uh, default usually when you copy pattern to track. If we go back to the selection tool, say you only want four bar groups. If I drag that across and select the whole four bars, right click on it and go group, you can see I've got a much larger group. For some reason it adds on a little bit after the end, I don't know why, you can just drag that back. There we go, now we've got a nice solid chunk which we can drag and drop around. We can do the same for the other, maybe two bar group. Uh, let's say it's ungrouped to begin with because you created it from scratch in the edit mode and you know you entered in all the notes individually, you didn't use the redrum uh, interface at all your notes would appear all here by default and what you'd have to do is drag across and be sure that your cursor is actually on one of these little bars here which are the actual notes or well, that's its rep representation of the notes you click on that and go group if you click off in the section that's not quite on the note when it's like that uh, you won't be able to have the group button won't, the group option just won't show up it'll be grayed out Okay, and once it's in groups, of course, it's much easier to arrange. You can change things around, do whatever you want. Of course, you can still go back to the edit mode anytime and do manual alterations. But basically, I generally prefer using the redrum interface here to create my initial drum loop and then copy pattern to track down to here and then make whatever alterations down there in the edit mode and then I've got the flexibility to do whatever individual arrangements I want and you know I don't have to create all these different patterns and stuff like that although you might find it easier just to create all the different patterns here and um, do it that way I mean, both can give you the same results one advantage to doing it up here is, of course, if you create a pattern and then put the pattern shuffle on, you can copy that pattern to the track and gain the benefits of having the shuffle, which gives it that nice human swing.